I now have about 3,000 miles on my Civic, which unfortunately means there's a few paint chips here on the hood that I want to go ahead and touch up. Now, a lot of people have trouble uh, with touch-up paint and just getting it to work right. So I thought I'd go through a few tips and tricks uh, to hopefully help you out if you guys are having some issues uh, with touch-up paint. So hopefully we'll get some better results this way. Uh, but first of all, I think it's important that we go through basically how touch-up paint works and what we're trying to accomplish with it. In order to do this, we'll be taking a look at the cross-section of your vehicle's paint. And there's a few different layers. So first of all, here is the substrate. And uh, in my particular case, this would be the steel of the hood. And then we've broken down the paint very simply into two layers, the color and the clear coat. And as you can see, the clear coat is a lot thicker than the actual paint. Now, um, a light scratch would look something like this, where there's just a nick in the clear coat. And uh, when the light hits it, it kind of goes in and then it bounces around all over the place before it shoots back out. That's what makes the scratch visible, because if you don't have a scratch, like we do over here, the light hits it and then bounces right off. So in a paint chip like this, uh, there's a much deeper portion that's been taken out. The actual paint is missing, and we need to fill it in with something. Um, otherwise, you just have the bare metal exposed, it could rust, and it looks very nasty. So this would be a situation in which we'd actually want to use touch-up paint. Something like this, we could compound and polish out pretty easily, or maybe just fill it in with a wax or a glaze if we really don't care a whole lot. Um, so basically, what a lot of people do with touch-up paint is they take out the brush and they get a huge glob of paint in here. Um, and that's not what we want to do because it's very, very uh, noticeable that we've touched it up and that we've done a pretty poor job of it. Um, the problem with the paint pen is that sometimes it just doesn't give you enough paint um, and depending on how soft the paint is or what kind of surface you're working on it can actually rough up the edges here. I've had that happen a couple times. So what we want to do with the touch of paint is we want to get just the right amount to fill in this area and just cap it off. We don't want this huge glob on here because it's going to be incredibly noticeable uh, but we also want to get enough paint in here that it's going to protect the metal and help fill in this blemish so that when the light hits it, it's not bouncing around all over the place inside the scratch and then coming out. It's simply bouncing right over the top and it's much less noticeable. So let's go up, back out to the car and uh, we'll put this into practice. Okay, here we are back at the car, and this is the area we're going to be focusing on. Uh, there's two chips here, there's one here, and there's a very tiny one there that I'm going to try to get as well. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get those filled in uh, very smoothly and without making it look uh, very obvious that we touched it up. Now, uh, first of all, we want to clay the area because I do have wax and sealant on here, and I don't want that to interfere with the paint sticking. So I'm going to grab some detail spray and my clay bar, and we'll get this clayed real quick. Now I did clean this area before claying it um, so that we'd have a lot less dirt to pick up. So now that we're clayed, uh, we're going to go ahead and go through some steps as to how we're going to fill in these chips uh, to get the best results. Okay, so first of all we want to rough up, uh, or actually smooth out, uh, the inside of the paint chip. So we're going to be using this abrasive end. Now you want to lubricate this, uh, either with water or with a detail spray. So we're going to go ahead and hit the, scratch, or the paint chip just a little bit, and then I'm going to hit the end of our uh, tool here. Basically, you're just going to rub this gently inside the scratch, and it's going to help us smooth out the inside of the scratch so the paint flows into it easier. Okay, now we're going to wipe that off. And we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're actually going to paint the inside of this paint chip, and this is where a lot of people have trouble. Uh, what they do is they take the brush, and they dab it on the inside of the paint, and they just start brushing it in. And they wonder why they have so much paint. So this is what we're going to try to correct today. What we're going to do is we're going to take a toothpick. And uh, let me get this in my right hand here since I'm right-handed. 
we're going to take this toothpick and we're basically just going to rub it on this paintbrush to get some of the paint off. Then we're going to dab it into the paint chip um, to fill it in and we're going to let the paint flow into the chip. So we're going to get some paint on the toothpick here. We're going to dab it on the paint chip. And this may take some time, so just have some patience and uh, just get it filled in. There we go. That's great. Um, it will kind of settle down a little bit as it dries. I'm going to hit this small one here. That's just about perfect. And then there's one here closer to the front that I'm going to get as well. Okay, now after filling in the others, I realize that there's a little too much here, so I'm just going to wipe it off with the end of my toothpick here. Um, and in doing so, I'm also going to try to direct it more into the paint chip. There we go. Okay, now in an effort to speed up the drying process so we can go ahead and throw the clear coat on, um, I'm going to use a hair dryer and just blow on it here for a minute or so. Yeah, so there's a couple small dimples still, so I'm going to go ahead and take the toothpick and just dab the paint in there one more time. Okay, now that it's filled in uh, one last time, I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer once again uh, just to dry that second coat. step is going to be to apply the clear coat. Now the uh, supplied clear coat comes with a small foam applicator which will uh, suck up a lot of the clear coat in the bottle and it'll just give us way more than we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the clear coat applicator out we're going to dab it on a paper towel. Okay, so that'll get out a lot of the uh, excess clear coat that's in the applicator here. We're just going to gently dab it over the painted surface here. We don't want to get it. We don't want to get a whole lot on here. We just want to basically top the paint with a thin layer of the clear coat. Uh, that'll help protect it and uh, make it a little bit shinier so that it's not quite as obvious that we touched it up. Now I'm just going to hit it again with the hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Now we have the paint chips filled in. It's not perfect and it's going to be impossible to receive perfect results with uh, touch-up paint like this uh, and especially without wet sanding. But it's a lot better than just you know brushing it with the brush and getting a huge glob of paint on it and it's a lot better than having a paint chip there. Okay, thanks for watching this video and I hope you learned some useful tips and tricks on how to use touch-up paint and how touch-up paint works. Um, so if you have any questions or comments uh, just post a comment below.